day everyone and welcome to Adventures with Parker. Today we are continuing our Pennsylvania road trip with one of my most favorite theme parks in the entire world and that is Hershey Park. This will mark my fifth visit to the park overall with my first one being for Christmas Candy Lane back in 2021 and I went three times last year and yeah, I am just so excited to be back. I love this park so much. Their coaster collection is absolutely phenomenal and it just got even better because this year they opened up their new RMC Hybrid Wildcats Revenge which unfortunately replaced Wildcat, their old wooden coaster which I had a soft spot for but I'm always excited for an RMC so I can't really be mad. Anyways, I'm just so excited to jump in and just get on everything today so without any further ado, let the Hershey Adventures begin. First, I have yet to caffeinate today, so I stopped in at the Hershey Park Starbucks to get the Chocolate Town Frappuccino, which is their very own creation here at Hershey Park. And essentially what it is, it's um, basically a uh, java chip frappuccino, but they put whip on the bottom and mocha sauce on the bottom, and then it's topped with whipped cream and topped with mocha sauce. I, I don't know the exact recipe. If I can find it, I'll put it up, but it's uh, pretty cool that they have their own signature drink here. I mean, I think you can get it at any Starbucks if you know how to order it. But still, it's cool and it's tasty and it gives me the caffeine that I need to get through today. Okay, also I don't think I've talked about my goals get for today. That's something that I've started doing on this trip and I kind of like the idea because it kind of sets my expectations, it gives me a focus and I don't know, I, I feel like if I can say, hey, I want to do these things and if I do, if I do those things then today is a great day and I mark those all off, it just I don't know, something about it just, it works for me. <laughs> so anyways, my goals for today are, one, we're going to ride Wildcat's Revenge. Two, I wanna do the monorail, because I keep saying I wanna do it and I haven't had a chance yet. And three, we're gonna have one of those big Hershey's milkshakes, because I am addicted to them. So those are my three main things. Of course I wanna get on some of my favorites. Like, uh, I just walked by Sky Rush there. And I think that my batch should be my first ride of the day. Actually, there's no line, so let's go! on Skyrush later and my thighs are absolute jelly but it's totally worth it. I freaking love this ride. It's just so out of control and intense and it just meets your body to high heaven. Like holy crap. This ride is one of the most insane like airtime machines I've ever been on. That said, I think three might be my limit for the time being. Um, I think the next ride I want to do is Comet because you know, it's gonna give my thighs that break that I need. Then after that, I think we're gonna move on to the back of the park to do Wildcats Revenge because I noticed that the park is starting to get a little bit busier. So I wanna get on that before the lines get too long. You are 
Okay, so it looks like Wildcat's Revenge isn't open yet, which is a little unfortunate. Um, it is supposed to open at some point today though. They're not exactly sure when. But I think for now, I have not had a proper breakfast yet. It is getting to be around lunchtime. And the other thing I really wanted to do today, honestly, I've been talking about it with all my friends. It's kind of crazy how much this has been on my mind. But I need to finally try the crab fries from Chickies and Peets. I keep talking about them. I keep wanting to try them. But I just, I don't know, for some reason, every time I came here or to any park with the Chickies and Peets, I've always like gone with another option or uh, it might not have been on the dining plan or whatever. But today, we are making it happen. So let's eat. Guys, I did it. I got the crab fries. I tried my first one and they are so good. I'm so glad I finally got to try them. Like these are amazing. Yeah, they were definitely worth the hype. Okay, so at this point you might be thinking to yourself, Parker, what the heck are crab fries? And what's the big deal about them? Well, crab fries were invented by the fine people over at Chickies and Peets, and essentially they're crinkle cut french fries topped with a secret blend of crabby spices, and they're usually served with a white creamy cheese sauce, so that's that little sauce container you see there. The combination may sound a little weird, especially if you're not a big fan of seafood, but I promise you, they're really, really good. They're also really filling, so this bucket was more than enough for me for lunch, and I didn't even finish all of it. But with my belly full and a Wildcat's Revenge fondly open, it was time to conquer Hershey Park's newest coaster. So I just completed my very first ride on Wildcat's Revenge and it was just an amazing, amazing coaster overall. I've been on a few of these RMC hybrids now, but uh, this one is kind of near the top for me, I think. It may not be the tallest or the fastest or the steepest or anything like that, but it was just super fun. I found it to be a bit of a smoother experience than other RMCs I've been on too. Like it still has those sustained airtime moments, but videos and restraint design but something about it was just more comfortable for me um, some of those transitions were super interesting and super cool i especially love the uh, stall you get some good hang time in that moment there's also a weird transition where it kind of flips and then turns right away it's quite jarring and i wasn't expecting it so that was a fun little surprise the logistical setup of the ride is pretty smart too you gotta put all of your loose articles into a locker uh, but it's kind of set up similar to Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point or like Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure where they have lockers just before you get into the station. But unlike Cedar Point where you gotta put your bags into a paid locker, these lockers are big enough to fit in all of your stuff. And that's something I really love about Hershey Park. Anytime where you have to use a locker, it's free, it's complimentary. And in my opinion, I think more parks should describe to this sort of model because I mean, I hate going to Cedar Point where I feel like I'm punished for having a bag. So um, I really liked how this worked. And then of course, when you get off the ride, it's one of those double-sided lockers where you can retrieve your stuff at the exit. The station itself was pretty well designed. That black and red color scheme was very striking. And then uh, on the other side of the platform where you board, they have these like murals of like jaguars and panthers and tigers. Like they looked just Super sick, super awesome. And then when you return to the station after the ride, there's a separate unload platform, which I'm sure really helps for like dispatches and uh, loading times and all that good stuff. So yeah, this ride just has so many good things going on for it. Overall, I think this is an excellent addition to Hershey Park. I'm going right back in line to do it again. And yeah, like this is, this made the day worth it already. Also, something I didn't notice my first time walking by is that they have a piece of the old Wildcat track up there. That's cool. I love it when parks preserve pieces of their old coasters. All right, so here's the deal. I 
got back in line for Wildcats Revenge and I got pretty close to the station. Like I was past the lockers already, but then they shut the ride down due to inclement weather. So uh, there's kind of been some thunderstorms on and off throughout the day. Like it hasn't rained in the park yet, but you know, they're close enough that it does pose a risk. So, you know, I've already been on the ride today. Uh, so I decided to leave and I think this is a good opportunity to head back to my car. I'm going to grab my battery pack. I, uh, I found that my battery has been draining faster than I thought it would be. So <laughs> with all the rides down, like there's no better time to do it than now. And then when I get back in the park, maybe I'll head over to Zoo America for a bit. I've been needing to revisit uh, Zoo America ever since my first visit back in 2021. So well, let's make that happen. Hello. Hello! <laughs> yeah! One hour later. Hey everyone! Welcome aboard the Hershey's Chocolate Factory Tour. For your safety, please remain seated with your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times. Machines generate lots of heat through intense pressure and friction. The grinding turns cocoa nibs into the smooth, dark liquid used to make milk and dark chocolate. These cartoon machines use the cocoa nibs. The cartoon process mixes and heats the chocolate, developing the rich flavor and color. Heavy rollers smooth out the refined crumb until it reaches the silky liquid texture of milk chocolate. <laughs> Bye for now! All of that fresh, delicious Hershey's chocolate goodness is finally ready to be packaged. Like Hershey's milk chocolate, special dog box. Hey, don't forget about Reese's peanut butter cups. My personal favorite. Everyone has a favorite. Mine are Hershey's Kisses chocolates. Aw, hey, Alex. That's so sweet. <laughs> This is why we do the factory tour. Okay, so the last hour has been a bit of a whirlwind. I uh, ended up going to the car to charge up my phone. I thought I brought my battery pack with me, but I think I left it at the hotel. So I just chilled in the car for a bit, which was good because it downpoured when I was in there and there was some thunder and it was the kind of thunder where like, I could feel it. Like my car was shaking from it. So that was kind of scary. I'm glad I wasn't out here in the midst of all that. Then when I felt it was a bit safer, I went over to Hershey's Chocolate World, did the factory tour, which I absolutely love. I mean, you can't come to Hershey Park and not do the factory tour. I mean, it's a free dark ride and you get chocolate at the end. So uh, you can't go wrong. Plus it's fun to learn about how chocolate is made. Like you can't tour the actual facilities where they make the Hershey chocolate. It's not far from here, but it's close off to the public. So this is uh, a pretty cool and fun substitute. It reminds me so much of an Epcot dark ride. So highly recommend heading into Chocolate World, checking that out. Usually that's something I would do before the park opens since uh, Chocolate World opens a couple hours before the actual like main park does. But since I arrived a bit later, I decided to just head right into the park. So I'm glad I got the chance to circle back and do it. Alright, we are at Simply Chocolate, which means the time has come for me to get one of the legendary king size milkshakes. This is cool. They have a special flavor for Wildcat's Revenge. We all know I'm a sucker for a themed beverage, so I think that's the one I'm going to have to try. I uh, honestly can't tell what's in there. Is that a Twizzler? Might be a Twizzler. We'll find out soon enough. 
Okay, so we got the Wildcats Revenge King Size Milkshake. And it's, uh, it's a chocolate milkshake base. But then it's got a maple bacon waffle and Twizzlers. And then like a chocolate cookie stick. This looks absolutely insane. Now I'm gonna be honest. Um, I am a little weary about the bacon on it. Like, like when they said a maple bacon waffle, I thought that the waffle itself would be infused with the bacon flavor and not that we'd have actual chunks of bacon on it. So that might be interesting. Ah, uh, let's see how this goes. But using those targets, we can shape and guide their behaviors. So anytime that we train our animals, we go on really small steps for that training process. We make sure it's very fun and positive for them along the way. Every animal and trainer has a different relationship. Um, so our supervisor isn't here today. She has worked with Coco the longest, as well as Amy. So their relationship might be a little stronger than a newer trainer coming in. Um, but truthfully, every animal also learns differently. So kind of like we do as people. So just because Coco was born here doesn't necessarily make it easier to train her. This boy, he's also a seal. Um, he's our male harbor seal. His name is Poe. And Poe joined our family about two years ago. And right now he's about 135 pounds. Full grown males though, they can reach weights of 600 to 900. So this little guy definitely has a lot of growing to do. Um, our goal with these animals, you know, training is super fun for them, but we also like to make sure every day is really fun and different. He's definitely at the beginning of his training, his formal training, I should say. We like to describe it that he's kind of in CYM kindergarten right now. Um, but with all of the training that we do with our animals, really the most important form of all of our training is husbandry care. And that's essentially all the medical behaviors that we can train our animals. This is also checking out the ice. Um, but we can train our animals to show us a flipper, they can lay out and show us their bellies or even open their mouths up. And that way, if we ever needed to do any medical procedures or examinations, we can do so in a really comfortable setting that is restraint free. Okay, so I apologize for how foggy uh, the lens is here. It's still raining, none of the coasters are open. So I wandered over here to Zoo America, which I haven't been to since uh, my first visit back in 2021. So we're starting out in the southern swamp area, which is nice because it's indoors out of the rain a bit. But uh, let's go see some animals. on the otter side.
So everyone knows I love penguins, but another animal I absolutely adore are wolves. And look at this one. So cute. Just a big floofer. Yeah. Yeah, you're a good wolfy wolf. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. I'm talking about you. You're a good wolfy wolf. All right, so Hershey's Triple Tower is probably one of the most unique drop tower combinations I've ever seen. So there's three separate towers and each of them has a different height. And they also kind of have a different character, like a different sort of drop sequence. And uh, I've done the Hershey Tower before, the tallest of the three, and really enjoyed that one. Uh, but I've heard good things about the Reese's Tower as well, the middle tower. And I agree, it's kind of cool because it like gives you a little more airtime. It like blasts you up blast you down, blast you up and down one more time. So it really like, it, it lifts you out of the seat by doing that. Now the Hershey Tower also has an upwards launch, but then it kind of brings you to the top of the tower, holds you there, and then it kind of gives you the element of surprise by blasting you down. So I don't know, both are good. I can't really rank one over the other, but they are uh, definitely both worth your time. <laughs> So just an update on where we are right now. Um, I went back to the parking lot because I realized that earlier I forgot my uh, souvenir bottle in the car and I am thirsty, so I really needed to go grab that. And I'm back in the park now and it seems that most of the rides seem to be reopening, but a lot of the big coasters are still closed. Like Candemonium isn't open yet, Skyrush isn't open, I haven't seen Stormrunner go in a while. And I mean, rides like Stormrunner, Fahrenheit, those are the ones that I need to get on before the end of the day. So I really hope that uh, they open soon. I mean, the rain has stopped, the skies look like they're starting to clear. So I think it's only a matter of time, but we are getting down to the last three hours of the day. So I think it's gonna be kind of a mad dash. I do know that Great Bear is open and that is one that I need to do still today. So I think that's where I'm gonna head next. And then from there, I'm gonna see if the monorail is open because that was one of my main goals for today and we haven't done it yet. So yeah, hopefully that works out for me. But uh, yeah, well, either, whatever happens, I mean, it's been a good day regardless. So we'll make the most of it. I was trying to find the entrance for Great Fair and I accidentally got in the queue for the log flume and I figured since I'm there, I might as well ride it. And uh, it was pretty good. I love these like old school log flumes. I mean, I'm a sucker for any kind of old school ride really. But this one was kind of nice because it's kind of built onto that like side hill. So you have Great Fair over you. You can see Super Duper Looper right there as well. And uh, it's pretty tall actually because it has two conveyor belts. After the first one, you have a little rapid section similar to uh, Dorney's, which I actually quite like. And then uh, you go up <laughs> again, and then that's where the drop comes. And it's, uh, it's a pretty good drop actually. And uh, there's a little bump at the bottom. I wouldn't call it like an airtime hill. You don't really get any airtime, but still kind of a unique feature. And you get a nice little splash, but you don't get soaked, which is nice. I mean, I'm already wet from the rain, but I didn't want to be soaked all over again. <laughs> Today we will 
Okay, after talking about it for years, I finally got around to doing the Hershey Park monorail and it definitely was everything I wanted. It's not a very long route, but it does do a loop kind of around the middle section of the park and it even crosses the road into Zoo America. You can catch a glimpse of the original Hershey Chocolate Factory. Not the one that they use now, obviously, but like, you know, the original building still stands. And yeah, there was a bit of narration as you were going around that kind of told you what you were looking at, to give you brief little snippets of history as you were going along. So yeah, it was totally worth it. I don't know why it took me so long to do it, but I'm glad that we got to do it today. Alright, so they finally reopened Candymonium for us, so I managed to get my ride in, which I am so happy about because this is just a fantastic roller coaster all around. I mean, I'm always a sucker for a good VNM hyper, but this one has a lot of really strong moments. Of course, one of my favorites is the uh, last uh, kind of overbanked airtime hill there, that wave turn, if you will. It, it is just so fun. Mind you, I did notice on this ride that um, the trims were a little stronger than I remember them being. So that did dampen the ride a little bit. And I think since my initial ride back in 2021, the ride just slipped down in my rankings a little bit. Still super fun though. I mean, well, that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I had to come back for Vodka Cuts Revenge, and then um, they had the DC 100 exhibit in Philadelphia, and I wanted to do that before it was over. So oh, yeah. it was kind of like that and this, and then I'm like, okay, well, I might as well go to Knobles. You must do like Coaster Dash and Canopy Coaster when it comes to Disney. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> So I got to enjoy my last few rides with Riley here from yep. Sky Guy R12 Turn. Please yes. make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube uh, and join my Discord server and, and make sure you follow me on Instagram. Yes, my, I'm gonna put all the information up on the screen. So yep, please right go follow here. him. Don't forget Roblox. Yes. <laughs> but anyways, we just finished uh, for our last ride of the night. We did Wildcats Revenge, uh, my second time on the ride. It is so good. And I mean, the ride definitely had a chance to warm up over the course of the day. So like this last ride was just so 
aggressive and so intense and yeah keep in mind our last ride was only in the third to back yeah true but yeah it, it is just such a great coaster and i'm so glad that it's here at hershey park now all right well that is going to do it for my day here at hershey park overall it was a pretty good day i mean the rain kind of sucked and it did take a lot of time away from you know time that i could have spent doing more coasters and doing more rides but i mean i did appreciate the opportunity it gave me to do hershey's chocolate world and um you know to check out the zoo so Overall, I can't really complain. Of course, Wildcat's Revenge was definitely a highlight for today. I mean, it was pretty much the whole purpose of this trip. Like that was the catalyst for me coming to Pennsylvania in the first place. So that was an awesome ride to get on. And then to ride all of my other favorites, Storm Runner, Candemonium, Fahrenheit. Yeah, like it was just all so good. Also, another big shout out to Sky Guy R12 Turns. Um, it, it is so great hanging out with him. This is his home park. So um, he actually has a lot of inside information. So I definitely learned a lot from him when I'm hanging out with him here. So uh, it was great to see him again. And yeah, that, that's that. <laughs> if you would like to see more theme park, travel, local and outdoor adventures, please consider becoming a subscriber. And if you would like to see more from my adventures on social media, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter and threads at ADV Parker and on TikTok and Facebook at Adventures with Parker. As always, big shout out to my patrons for all the extra support you guys give the channel. I appreciate you all so much. I couldn't do what I do without your support. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if you would like to learn how you can support the channel for as little as a toonie a month in exchange for some sweet perks, you can find out more at patreon.com slash Parker. Once again, thank you so much for joining me here on this Hershey Park adventure. And until next time, Hey, the adventures are calling, they seem rare. <laughs>